clean records. You want them, you need them, you gotta have them. My name is Chris and today we're going to see if the Record Doctor 6 will get you the results you're after. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! One of the biggest hurdles we face as vinyl enthusiasts by far is the endless struggle to keep our records clean. Of course, to keep a record clean, it must first start out that way, and that in and of itself is another endeavor altogether. Should you hand clean, spin clean, vacuum clean, or employ the use of an ultrasonic? While each of these can generally be a topic unto themselves, today we're going to look at the hand-powered vacuum cleaning machine offered up by Record Doctor. At $330 at the time of filming, the Record Doctor 6 is an affordable solution to one of our nagging problems. It's a straightforward machine that requires little effort to use and little cerebral prowess to understand. You put a record on the top, add some solution, spin the handle, and in turn the record, and wipe away the dirt and debris with the included brush. Nothing unnecessarily complex or confusing. Once that's done, you flip the record over, turn the vacuum on, and rotate the record once again until the freshly clean record is dry and dirt is sucked up. That's all well and good, and indeed quite easy, but it begs the question, just how well does this cleaner work? That's why we're here today, and I have some test results to share. Before we jump into that, however, here are the particulars of the Record Doctor 6. Coming in three colors, just in case you're looking to match your decor with your cleaning products, you'll find gloss black, gloss white, and carbon fiber. It boasts a stain-resistant aluminum top to repel excess water and an easy-to-empty reservoir once you've cleaned and vacuumed a chunk of your record collection. The large size handle on top spins easily in conjunction with a roller bearing that sits just underneath the bottom platter, while the rubberized grips attached to both surfaces cling tightly but safely to your records. There's an included 6-foot cord, the fluid applicator brush, which most of us might just call the cleaning brush, and a 4-ounce bottle of the aforementioned cleaning solution. While the ingredients of said solution are a bit of a mystery, it is alcohol-free and claims to make use of laboratory-grade industrial strength cleaning agents one of which certainly seems to be a surfactant of some sort, as the solution easily makes its way into the record grooves. They go on to mention that the solution can be used with any number of cleaning machines, including that of their competitors. Good on them. You'll also find a user's guide and safety guidelines, but that stuff is pretty boring, so let's take a look at how the Record Doctor 6 did with cleaning. Taking a brand new but warped record that had been sitting out for a bit collecting dust naturally, I carved a reference line into the vinyl to make sure I was measuring in at least one consistent spot amongst the others. While the particulates might look quite large under my USB microscope, they are exactly what you would expect to see when leaving a record unsleeved and laying flat for a while. The more eagle-eyed of you might see the layer of dust in this video as I go about placing the record on the machine for its first cleaning. I ran one line of fluid across the surface from run-in groove to run-out groove, placed the spin handle on top, and started rotating with one hand while using the clean brush in the other. I'd give a brief word of caution here. You do not need to apply much pressure with the brush, and I think I did just that for many of the cleanings in this video. Flipping the record, I put the handle back on, powered up the vacuum, and started turning once more. Another useful technique I quickly picked up was to continue to spin the record as I powered down the vacuum and gently lift at the same time to avoid getting an abrupt stop line on the clean record. As you can see here, it's not something you'd want on a finished product, so you might bear this in mind. With the first cleaning done, I put the record back under the microscope and took a look at the results. Overall, I'd say it did quite well with the amount of dust that was on the record originally. Moving up the record, but staying along the witness mark, there were a few more bits of dust here and there, so I set about a second cleaning to see if there would be any improvement. I used the fluid in more of a wide pattern all over the record this time, but truth be told, I don't think there was really any difference in cleaning with how the solution was applied. I went through the cleaning and drying steps again and took another microscopic photo. There was indeed improvement, so, as would stand a reason, you might simply want to clean your dirty records more than once if you're not seeing the results that you'd like. But what about the cleaning solution? It seemed to work quite well and did sit in the grooves nicely, but I've always been a bit skeptical of proprietary detergent cleaners, so I wanted to test out a tergital cleaning followed by distilled water rinse. Of course, this meant having to add dirt as I didn't have another test record just sitting about. Before you jump out of your seat and complain about the amount of dirt or the method of its application, I do realize it makes for an extreme case, but having already tried a real-world test, I thought it would be prudent to push the limits. Sprinkling on some dust I'd vacuumed from my carpet, I pressed it lightly into the grooves and blew off the excess. While not the most scientific method, perhaps, it certainly got the job done. I placed the record back on the machine and applied a pretty liberal amount of my Turgitol mix. 
Apparently, I wasn't as concerned with using more of this solution as it's fairly cheap to make and I wasn't sure just how much a replacement bottle of the Record Doctor fluid would be at the time of testing. I later looked up the pricing and found that you can get 8 ounces for 15 bucks, 16 ounces for 20 and a hefty 32 ounces for $30. At any rate, another wash, another dry, another photo. The tests seem to yield excellent results, but I think a couple of factors could have been at play here. One, I used a lot more fluid in this test than with the Record Doctor fluid and it stands to reason that the excess fluid would move dirt around easier. And two, even though the applied dirt was fairly heavy, it was only applied in one area which most likely made for less dirt overall. Either way, I think the Record Doctor 6 did a pretty good job here. I repeated the last test again just to see if I could replicate my own results and to my satisfaction, I did. A wash with detergital mix and a rinse of distilled water made quick work of the vast majority of dirt here. I did learn an additional technique toward the end, however. If you look closely at this record, you can see the elongated spots. This isn't dirt, it's fluid. While I spent a good deal of time turning the record to get it washed clean, I apparently didn't spend nearly as much time vacuuming off the cleaning solutions. This is something to which you'd want to pay particular attention. The entire point of having a vacuuming record cleaner is to not only lift the dirt away, but to dry the record as well. Spending a few extra turns to make sure that happens is time well spent. You don't ever want to put a damp record back in its sleeve. You're just asking for mold. So with those tests in the bag and the results fairly obvious, is there anything I didn't particularly care for with the Record Doctor 6? Yes, actually. I must say, I wish it were automated. I had a project vacuum record cleaner for a while before I upgraded to my degrader and the automated spinning platter was quite simple to use and may have spoiled me some. That said, the reason Record Doctor can offer this machine at the price they do is because it is a manual machine. If you want to pay double for an automatic machine, you probably already have. Another issue to consider is the noise. This machine is not quiet. Holding a decibel meter one foot away and level with the top of the machine while running, I had steady readings of 86 decibels with peaks as high as 88. You can disregard the 90 dB peak reading, that was the meter in a different location. If you plan to spend an afternoon tidying up your vinyl collection with the intent of listening to them later, you'll want to consider hearing protection. Your clean, shiny records won't do you any good if you can't hear them with all the ringing in your ears. Otherwise, I'd say that if you're looking for an affordable alternative to hand washing or spin cleans with the added bonus of dry records at the end of the process, the Record Doctor 6 might just be for you. It can do a damn fine job of removing even heavy amounts of dust and debris depending on the time you take to clean. It's compact and it's easy to use. What more could you ask for at this price? Thanks to my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch and I look forward to next time.